Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and, of course, in the Gold Coast where I've presented a number of times for various companies over the years and always had a wonderful reception from people. And um, as might have been mentioned before, we've met some uh, lifelong friends across there. And um, you know, Trek's a company that um, I got involved with uh, late last year. Um, we wanted to reposition the company, restructure, refund, and look for an exciting project we could really get our teeth into. Um, I looked at projects overseas and had a, probably 15, 20 companies to look at and, and projects, but really I was drawn back to the Pilbara where I'd had some success previously with Pilbara Minerals and had a history of exploration from the early 2000s with other companies. Um, so Trek was refunded and we did a deal on um, four projects, uh, four tenements in the Pilbara, one located just south of Pilgungur, 100 k's um, south of Port Hedland, the other down near Mount Newman on a greenstone belt that had seen little exploration um, over the last uh, 10 years and really the exploration there had been focused mainly on iron ore. So we're targeting large scale deposits. We have four tenements, two are granted, one is on its way to being granted and uh, really focusing on underexplored greenstone belts in the Pilbara and um, as I mentioned uh, one of them in particular is located near Pilgungura, not far from the bitumen, 100 k south of Port Hedland. The other one about 50 k from Newman. So access to these projects is pretty straightforward um, in an area that I know particularly well and uh, they have um, a lot of potential in regards to base metal and gold exploration. So on the corporate structure we have 210 million shares on issue. We last raised money at about three and a half cents. Uh, top 20 shareholders own about 50% of the company, management about 10%. As was mentioned, Tony Leibowitz and Neil Biddle recently joined me on the board and the support from those guys is important. They understand exploration, they understand what we need to do to be successful and develop a project. So all the things you need um, from starting out as a junior explorer. Uh, Russell Hardwick, our CFO, also is a, the CFO for Bardock and we share the offices there so it's a low cost environment for Trek and I've got a very good young uh, exploration consultant, Leo Horn, has uh, a lot of experience in the Pilbara and has previously worked for Impact Minerals and uh, other companies in the region. Uh, the four project areas, as I mentioned, one's located 100k south. Um, that's the Pinkuna project, uh, right near Pilgungura, um, about 70 or 80 k's directly west of Marble Bar. And the other project down at Newman, uh, both within, both in Arkane Greenstone Belts, both underexplored, and have had a history of exploration from about 1969 through to about 2006 uh, for base metals and gold. And, uh, the key component of uh, acquiring this ground is that it had to have uh, drilling, it had to have some exploration, historical exploration results that I could focus on and apply the knowledge and particularly with recent discoveries and apply the knowledge that comes from those recent discoveries. So uh, we're pr it's prospective ground for intrusion related gold systems and VMS deposits and gold mineralisation related to VMS deposits. So at Pincuna, the two tenements there are broken up um, around about 100 square kilometres of ground. Uh, they've had, as I mentioned, previous exploration history. The initial focus for us will be two prospects, Carlindi and Valley of the Gossens. Carlindi was recently drilled, uh, well, most recently drilled in 97 by Linus Gold, who had a gold operation um, about 10 kilometres to the north, almost uh, about two or three kilometres uh, east of the Pilgungura mine. Um, at the moment, that uh, ground that's between Pilgungura and myself, a uh, high portion of that is owned by Kairos. I think Kairos are talking later today. 
Uh, they have about 873,000 ounces and our ground on the northern side of the western tenement uh, abuts their resource and that resource is those yellow dots you can see to the uh, northwest, sorry, and um, that's, con that's about 600 and something thousand ounces just to the north uh, west of our ground. And of course, I've mentioned that the infrastructure there is pretty good because we're really not far from uh, the Pilbara Minerals Lithium Project. Uh, the lithium system there, the pegmatites there run for over 10 kilometres and they're in a major structural system that runs to the north and to the northeast and those pegmatites intrude very late into the system in, on big structures. The other structures that run through Carlindi uh, and, and to the uh, west of the Valley of the Gossens prospect is called the Carlindi uh, Structural Complex. That runs through those antiforms and sinforms you see at the bottom of the, the tenement there to the west. Uh, very prospective piece of ground, I mean very little modern exploration and it's in an area where uh, the uh, soil profiles have been stripped. Uh, there's a bit of exposure there, you can see the geology, it looks exciting when you're on the ground and um, uh, our initial work there delivered some very good results. The, the project over the other side there, I call it Pincuna East, has had exploration, it's had some uh, air core drilling, it's delivered a, uh, particularly a, a interesting area called Honey Eater. That structure runs north through Strelly Pool, which is an old copper prospect just off the north side of our tenements. And of course that um, uh, northeast trending blue zone there is the Abydos sign ore project that um, Atlas and now Hancock own and is in uh, shutdown at the moment. In a little bit more detail, Valley of the Gossens was drilled in 1969. Uh, PMI drilled it. Um, they did uh, open hole percussion, a uh, number of holes, uh, maybe 18 holes at the most through that area, uh, focused on the Gossens that are exposed there north-south in an area of about two kilometres by a kilometre. These Gossens um, have about up to half a gram of gold at surface in rock chips. And interestingly enough, the historical drilling delivered some pretty exciting results in altered uh, felsics. Uh, these felsic zones in this, you can see the orange unit that runs east-west, the structures run through that, cross-cut them, and the porphyries there uh, are pyritic um, and uh, very interesting. It's a deeply weathered zone and structurally quite complex, but uh, initial work suggests to me that we may have uh, uh, mineralisation at depths uh, that haven't been uh, drilled before. The drilling was shallow and uh, I think um, a detailed soil sampling program and some follow-up uh, gradient array IP will actually help assist us in uh, defining those drill targets. So uh, an interesting area has potential, sorry, potential for base metals um, and with, we had some surface nickel results up to 0.8% <clears throat> and intersections of uh, 30, 40 metres at above a gram. So. Quite interesting. Here's a couple of cross sections from 1969. I've coloured them up. They were hand drawn. Um, but essentially, you see the Gossens at surface with some mineralisation, with some high silver values, uh, lowish copper, um, and uh, arsenic. Uh, so they are typically um, base metal type Gossens. But you can see the gold intersections sitting off to the side in the um, altered uh, felsic rocks, felsic intrusives and um, not just one hole, um, there's several holes in the area that are anomalous and I think um, it, it really does produce an, an exciting exploration target. Uh, we need to obviously get a drill rig in there and do the work. Before that I want to um, determine the structural setting a little bit better, do some uh, IP and soils, but uh, I think you'll see that it would, over a um, two kilometre strike length, would, it delivers quite a large target uh, for us in 2021. That's what the Gossens look like. You can see they're quite small, they're quite narrow. They trend um, uh, north, north, northwest. Uh, they're brecciated, have a lot of iron content. They look typically uh, base metal type Gossens, but essentially um, with those drill results and the exciting gold results in those uh, altered 
altered felsics. Um, uh, I'm very keen to get in there and do some more work. The other project I mentioned was Carlindi, which is on the, the west side um, of that Carlindi structural complex, uh, it's sitting in sediments. Um, again, not a lot is known. This is vein systems in sediments. Um, are quite narrow, but high grade, so 10 metres at 5 grams, 7 metres at 6.2. Those, those two, Carlindi and Carlindi North, are about a kilometre apart, but that uh, structural setting is, uh, extends for over six kilometres and extends into uh, the ground held by Pilbara Minerals, and um, you'll see that they had some success uh, on this Carlindi trend with some of their drilling for gold exploration um, last year. So um, it is a big structural setting for us to explore. We've got to go back to basics um, and uh, target that whole six kilometre zone. I mentioned P uh, Pincuna East Honey Eater. Again, this is an area which um, has had little modern explorations, had results of four metres at six grams in shallow air core drilling down the south end. It's, got, it's on a trend which has um, a low grade copper deposit just off to the tenement. And um, you can see Sulphur Springs sitting off to the east there, about 10 kilometres from us, so a fairly large scale VMS deposit. Um, over 300 tonnes of contained copper, 900,000, sorry, 300,000 tonnes of contained copper, 900,000 tonnes of zinc, and only 10 k's in the same sort of rocks. So uh, the endowment of the area is quite exciting, and as I mentioned, I'll mention it again, has had very little modern exploration. Jimble Bar uh, was picked up as part of the acquisition, um, 160 square kilometres of ground, um, has had historical exploration for copper VMS style deposits, both uh, centipede and millipede have delivered um, some reasonable copper results. Hampton Hill Mining did 42 RC holes at millipede <coughs> a few years ago um, and there's some wide uh, low grade copper intersections. Copper Knob sits between the two tenements and is a, is a quite a large a low grade copper deposit that's never been developed. So uh, again, ground that's very prospective, has had previous drilling and um, for me that is uh, exactly what I'm looking for as an as a explorationist. Um, the trend you see, the main trend you see there from Pillywinkle, Sunny South, Shearers, um, it sits on the um, eastern side of a granite intrusive. This is a potassic rich granite and the mineralisation there in previous explorers have defined that as intrusive related mineralisation. You can see that the light blue zone that runs through there um, delivers a, probably an exploration target at Pillywinkle of about two or three kilometres and that swings around to the west and that's been no historical work uh, done on that area in the central part of the granitoid. Um, that tenement is to be, will be granted very soon um, and we will be getting on the ground there shortly. The, um, we, we did take some rock chips and we <coughs> defined some new targets uh, there at Pillywinkle and um, to the west of Pillywinkle. Um, Stew's Find is one of the ones we were at recently, rock chips of two to three grams, uh, old gold workings, three or four hundred metres long, sitting on the boundary between uh, the Chert Biff zone and the Mafix, <coughs> very close to the potassic rich granite. So the right setting to be in and we'll be getting back there and doing some more work. At Pillywinkle, uh, running through to Sunny South, uh, historical work there, um, had to find a large scale IP anomaly. The IP anomaly at Sunny South was coincidence with the gold mineralisation. If you <coughs> come south of Sunny South into Pillywinkle, that IP anomaly is untested. It has, as I mentioned before, two kilometres of uh, strike potential, um, strong surface gold results, good soil anomaly, been drilled by air core mostly, so there are some RC holes, <coughs> and have delivered some low grade, uh, you know, 20 metres at 0.2, uh, nine metres at 0.3, six metres at two. So we're getting there as far as the grades are concerned. 
I think that, that delivers an exciting target for us. And that trend running north runs to another untested anomaly, um, which is about 4K's strike. So an exciting piece of ground that's had very little work and um, we, we will, we will endeavour to get on there as soon as it's uh, granted early in 2021. So simply we've been able to reposition, uh, refund the company, put it into a direction where, you know, the expiration potential of these tenements has been untested for quite some time. Uh, there's been a new focus on the Pilbara. We know that the Pilbara can host significant gold mineralisation in these intrusive related settings. And we have an uh, opportunity to um, deliver some exciting results early in the history of, of, of Trek, in, in early in 2021. And um, I'm looking forward to getting some holes in the ground there. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, John. Uh, we've had a couple of questions come through on the text line. Uh, which of the projects do you think has the best potential for hemi-style mineralisation? Uh, the setting at Pincuna, um, uh, that felsic sulphitic porphyry, hasn't had any attention at all, and it has quite a long strike length through that part of the belt. So I think Pincuna at this stage. The stronger evidence, though, for intrusive related mineralisation at the moment is uh, down at Jimble Bar, um, but we don't have a lot of the uh, intrusive, um, the peripheries of it. Okay. Mm. Uh, just one further question. You recently uh, withdrew your rights issue. Could you give us some explanation about what was the reasoning behind that? Um, there was a couple of things, mainly the vol well, volatility of the market. We, we understood that we're right in the middle of the election and there was two or three weeks to go, and so there was uncertainty in that. The pricing had come back and I th think that we've done the right thing by shareholders by, you know, we don't need the money at the moment. Uh, I think we've got a pretty focused exploration plan. So um, I'd like to get some results on the board first. Thanks very much, John. Yeah. Okay.